Would you freak out if you saw a zombie clawing out of your flower patch? And how would you react if the streets of your city were filled with posters inviting everyone to come to your actual house? And what if, instead of a Christmas gift, someone gave you your own personal things, but heavily wrapped in gift wrap? <laughs> and I'm not just talking about a stapler. Hi, I'm Peter, and you're watching Osa. I'm going to tell you about one of the most hilarious and long-lasting prank wars in the history of Hollywood. John Krasinski versus Jimmy Kimmel, aka the Christmas Trolls. Are you ready to pick the king of pranks? So, how did this spectacular festive feud start? Well, John and Jimmy aren't just good friends. Their families used to be neighbors who actually lived across the street from one another. And as any trusting neighbor would, Kimmel was carefree enough to give Krasinski and his wife Emily Blunt a key to his house. Which has me wondering how often he must regret that decision. Four years ago, you broke into my home. You yeah. Pretty innocent. You put a Yeah, it all started at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> Your producer called it B-Cubed, which I thought was pretty cool. B-Cubed? Bed never Bath & Beyond. No one will ever use that again. <laughs> anyway, eight years ago, what started as an innocent and perhaps even sweet joke turned into an all-out prank war. A war that has lasted as long as The Office, a sitcom well known for its pranking and where John Krasinski must have mastered the art of trolling. Round one, share some light. So, back in 2011, John and Emily sneaked into Jimmy's house using their key and installed a charming snowman and Santa light display in their neighbor's living room. Kimmel's reaction to this fun, festive light installation? escalate the situation with some bold neon lights. He bought a big neon insurance sign and installed it on the wall of his dearest neighbor's driveway. We share your pain, John. That's not really Christmassy in the slightest, is it? Where's the candy cane, the reindeers, the jolly old elf? So, considering that Jimmy's sign wasn't exactly on theme or particularly inspired, we can all agree that this first round goes to John and Emily, one nil. Round two, you're doing it all wrong. Where's your Christmas spirit? The following year, Team Krasinski Blunt made the first move once again. We don't know if it was retaliation for the insurance sign or some kind of bad post-Halloween joke, but they planted a zombie in Kimmel's garden. According to Jimmy, the effect was terrifying. This was more of a nightmare before Christmas without even a hint of ho, ho, ho. So together with his wife, Molly McNerney, Jimmy decided to teach his younger neighbors a lesson about Christmas cheer. After all, reindeers are way better than zombies, right? So the couple installed a 26-foot-tall inflatable reindeer in Krasinski and Blunt's front yard. It could have been the sweetest of gestures, if only for the fact that the fake reindeer came complete with 100% real reindeer poop. Ugh. <laughs> Once again, I believe there's no doubt that after round two, Kimmel equaled the score. One all. Round three, wrap it like a pro. In the third year of their not very neighborly holiday feud, Jimmy and Molly decided to settle the score and end the pranking war by taking the game to a whole new level. And this time, it was they that drew first blood. When John and Emily were out, Team Kimmel McNearney, plus a whole gang of assorted others, decided to gift wrap their neighbor's house. In fact, they turned Krasinski Blunt's fully decorated home into a veritable Christmas village with tons of artificial snow, carol singers, and one terrifying elf who popped out of a gift box to show John his gloating nemesis via iPad. I'm just wondering, did uh, Kimmel get that rapping idea from somewhere familiar? Was he inspired, perchance, by Jim, aka John's iconic wrapping paper prank from The Office? Wait, does that make Kimmel Dwight? Anyway, back to the prank. Kimmel could now consider himself the pranking king. Once you gift wrap somebody's house, surely that can't be topped. So round three unquestionably goes to Jimmy and Molly, especially as their competitors couldn't even come up with anything to rival Jimmy's Yuletide spectacular. One, two. Round four. We're not done with the wrapping, dude. John and Emily took a year off from the feud in order to plan their revenge for that spectacular house wrapping winter village combo. Doing the same thing wouldn't have been original, so this time the Krasinski Blunt duo enlisted an army of helpers to put the perfect prank into action by gift wrapping Kimmel's car while it was parked at the office. Oh no. What the hell is this? That's a really good, actually, a really good job. It has to be him. Seems pretty tame, right? But obviously, wrapping it once was not enough. The first time, they filled Jimmy's car with tons of baubles. <laughs> Crazy, right? And that was only a third of the surprise that Kimmel had in store. The 
very next night, Jimmy found his car wrapped yet again in the parking lot, completely covered in wrapping paper. Only this time, Kimmel was unnerved by the disconcerting sight of a horde of carol singers getting out of it. And this was quite an escalation to the prank war, as Jimmy just can't stand people singing at him. And to top it all off, we get yet another reindeer, but this time, it was real. All in all, it made for a rather merry Christmas mood. But the prank didn't end there. Unbeknownst to Kimmel, while he and Emily Blunt were chatting on the set of Jimmy Kimmel Live about their ongoing wintry shenanigans, Blunt asked the crew to show a live feed of the studio parking lot. For the third time in a row, Jimmy was faced by the sight of his car wrapped up like a Yuletide gift. Only this time, he was treated to a vision of John Krasinski dancing in front of it, dressed as Jolly Old Saint Nick. But unlike the Jolly Old Elf, Krasinski came to take things from Kimmel. The double-bearded Krasinski Krampus stole Jimmy's laptop and clarinet, got inside the car, and promptly crashed it into a pole and backed it up into another car. I need my computer! <laughs> what is going on out there? No! I mean, what did you expect? With all that rapping, he was driving blind. And as the cherry on top of this delicious Christmas pudding, Blunt and Krasinski dropped a piano on top of Kimmel's car. Needless to say, the Krasinski Blunt team had equaled the score to all. Round five ho, 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 and an eggnog shower. Of course, this all meant that it was Kimmel's turn to kickstart the festive fun, but Krasinski actually robbed him of the honor. Moreover, John seemed to have really enjoyed the three-phase revenge routine, so once again, there were three stages to his annual attacks. One, John sent a half-naked Santa to climb up to Jimmy's office window and wish him a very personal Merry Christmas. And if you think that a topless Santa sounds tame or harmless, you're missing one crucial detail. It was the lower body that lacked the clothes. Two, Krasinski arranged for the late night host to receive another reindeer. Only this time, the furry festive friend could be found inside Jimmy's dressing room. And for the third act, John turned Jimmy's office into the North Pole, complete with polar bears and a very suspicious package, which turned out to be a red herring as Krasinski, hidden as a giant nutcracker who'd been standing perfectly still the whole time, leapt out and gave Jimmy the fright of his life. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh I see what's gonna happen here. Do you? Ah! Yeah! <laughs> 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 Can we call Krasinski the nutcracking prank king yet? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, because Kimmel had a trick up his sleeve as well. Jimmy Kimmel decided to hit John where it hurt, his privacy. Jimmy made tons of posters advertising a yard sale at Krasinski's actual address and distributed them all over town. And to make matters worse, he set the time of this flash sale as 6 a.m. sharp. A couple of hundred copies no. of this yard sale sign. Wait, and, that is my real address. Hey, that is your real address. And we posted them all over town. But after suffering at the hands of John Krasinski and Emily Blunt over and over, it simply wasn't enough for Jimmy. As a final act of revenge, Kimmel showered Krasinski with eggnog when he was a guest on his show. Four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I have one other thing for you also. What? One other little surprise. <laughs> I don't know how forgiving I'd be after something like that. I mean, I'd be furious if anyone came to my yard unannounced, and I'm not even a celebrity, yet. So, who won round five? Krasinski with his naked Santa reindeer North Pole thing, or the dastardly deeds of Jimmy Kimmel? We've seen plenty of the decoration pranks before, so in terms of originality, I guess this one goes to Kimmel. Two, three. Folks, the story could have ended there. John and Jimmy are no longer neighbors. I wonder why. So it looked like the prank war ended in 2015. But once again, who could forgive and forget flyers with your home address posted up all over the city? Brzezinski certainly couldn't, so he raised the bar. Round six, welcome everyone. Last year, while Kimmel was temporarily making his show in New York City and living in a rented apartment in Brooklyn, he actually became Krasinski's neighbor for a week. 
Uh-oh, I'm sure you know what that means. Kimmel must have let his guard down, but he'll hardly forget that week anytime soon. John decided to get his Christmas prank in way too early, before Halloween even. Krasinski arranged for the maximum amount of visibility, recognition, and hospitality by putting all sorts of signs on Jimmy's Airbnb apartment. Man, did he roll out the welcome wagon and make sure that no one could miss who was staying at that apartment. A huge, flashy banner proclaiming Jimmy was the proud resident of the apartment, flashing traffic signs, and even another choir inviting everyone into Jimmy Kimmel's house. Oh, and uh, an inflatable Santa and snowman, of course, despite the fact that it was mid-October. Guys, if you're in Brooklyn, which you already are, get your kids to trick-or-treat early. <laughs> it's Park Slope, Brooklyn. You'll see it. You'll know it. You'll know it. It's a, it's a bright light. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy was livid at himself for not being prepared for such a turn. And with that, the score was even once again. Three all. But whoever's on top, you can be sure it won't be for long. I'm not sure who we can crown as the king of pranks, not when the war is far from over. Well, you know, it's funny you would say that, John, oh. because I also know where you live. Oh. At, uh... <laughs> but what can Kimmel do this year to beat Krasinski's last prank? How far will things go? Jimmy could hand out John's phone number or maybe invite people over to the Blunt Krasinski homestead for an impromptu sleepover. Nah, nah, I bet it'll be something even more spectacular. Share your guesses about what you think the Princes of Pranks could do next in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and, as always, stay awesome.